on Inside Tennessee talking about the double runoff for the U.S. Senate in the state of Georgia and what's going to make this race stand out among any other we've seen is money. No question. Let me just give you some baselines to consider. In 2018, we saw the governor's race in the state of Tennessee uh, and about $50 million spent among all the candidates in that. So keep $50 million in mind. The, the last big competitive U.S. Senate race that we had in Tennessee, um, which involved uh, Marsha Blackburn and Phil Bredesen, we saw $35 million spent on that U.S. Senate race. Dr. O'Gorman, $50 million and $35 million. What are we going to see in the next month spent in the state of Georgia? A lot more than that. I was just peeking down <laughs> when you were chatting there. I just <laughs> a lot more than that. I just peeking down. Uh, Fox Business had an article from two days ago saying that they believe ad buys have already cracked 120 million, and they're not done spending. Extraordinary amounts of money. Susan referenced it, the fact that she's seeing um, ads kind of sneak into the South Carolina Georgia border market. My guess is all of our friends in Chattanooga are going to see a lot of ads because they're going to be trying to find every market to buy TV ads by TV time. We're going to see spending, in especially in a special or off off schedule election that we've never seen before, knowing so much is on the line. Easily and 100 Susan, million, probably close to 150. Sorry. Yeah, 100, 150, perhaps, uh, Professor. But Susan, that that number, 100 million. You think about what was spent by Democrats in the South Carolina race to unseat um, Lindsey Graham from his seat, and that was over several months. This is going to be a concentrated, basic six weeks of time. Yeah. 104 or 5 million was spent by the Democrats, uh, Jamie Harrison, in the South Carolina race against Lindsey Graham. And, and, and he lost. Jamie Harrison lost fairly significantly. Same was uh, true in, in Kentucky. All of us saw the Amy McGrath ads against Mitch McConnell, and McConnell won fairly overwhelmingly. I think this could honestly end up being a half a billion dollars in this campaign. And that short period of time, think about that. But you've got, as Dr. Gorman said, you've got Chattanooga, you've got uh, Savannah, Georgia, you've got um, all the South Carolina states at border. And uh, I imagine you'll have some in Alabama as well. So there's gonna be an enormous amount. And right now where I am, there is nothing on the television and advertising except those four candidates' ads. So yeah, hang on to your hats, guys. It's gonna be a bumpy road. What, what about the exhaustion, Don? Because we see this typically at the end of races and everybody just wants to turn the TV off because they get so inundated with these ads. How, how, how will they resonate, do you think, with voters? Well, I, I think there is going to be at least some ad exhaustion with people looking at TV, no matter if you're Democrat or Republican, and particularly with the negative ads. Frankly, there are a lot more perceived negatives for the Republican candidates. They've got longer records. They're also both incredibly wealthy, uh, and that does not play well sometimes, as we've seen. Um, but I think in terms of vote turnout, you know, early voting starts December 16th. And, and also, they have uh, any reason mail-in uh, voting in Georgia. So it's very easy for Georgians to vote. Uh, I think people are going to turn the TV off. I can assure you that uh, you won't see a commercial for your favorite toy at Christmas. You're going to see it for a candidate, um, and they're going to buy. I, I agree with Susan. Uh, if you take the 35 million to 50 million numbers that you spoke of with the Tennessee races, you can add a zero to each one of those races, and that's what we're going to see spent, somewhere between 350 million and half a billion dollars. But this is so concentrated. This is the only race in the country going on right now right then on january 5th and again as we've said earlier the most important race for control frankly ideologically of the legislative branch of government so uh it's going to be incredibly expensive kelly leffler's worth half a billion dollars personally she can't take her entire worth and fund the entirety of this election so when have we ever seen that with a multi-million near billion dollar candidate um, we're going to see uh, money and more national money go into a state race than we've ever seen as well. And Professor, we'll give you the last word before we head to break in the next 30 seconds, but what do you say about ad fatigue and negative ads? Does ad fatigue happen and do negative ads work? Um, uh, 
we put them, we put negative ads on because they do have more, sadly, more impact than the other ones. And I say sadly because you'd like to not have your contest spiral down. You'd like to have it lifted up in terms of the contrast of the records. So they can work. Back to the fatigue. If you're at like literally a thousand or fifteen hundred ads over the course of six months, people will turn off the TV. My guess is you're going to be seeing new ads made, ads that have been already not used during the initial cycle. New ads that both sides, all four candidates, are going to make and hope they can create a new message or a new packaging of that message and hopes they can win over those extra voters. Look for some new ads coming down the stretch. We're gonna close our conversation out right after this short break. We'll see you in just a minute.